So next up, we want to look at planes, and of course, in three dimensions. Okay? Uh, now, planes are kind of a, a tricky thing to try and especially draw in three dimensions. Again, with software, we can use software to help us visualize. Um, the planes that are drawn in the textbook are interactive, which is nice. You can move them around. Uh, unless you're on the paper version, then you kind of stuck. Uh, but um, the trouble, you know, you, you want to think of a plane, you know, in your mind, that when you picture a plane, you probably picture like a, a tabletop or a basketball court or something like that, or some flat kind of rectangular surface. Um, but of course, a, a plane should have infinite extent. It goes on forever. Um, but that's not something we can really draw. So we try to draw kind of a, a portion of a plane. And so typically what we end up drawing is sort of something more like a, you know, like a parallelogram or something like that. Okay. Um, so the simplest planes are the coordinate planes. Right? We like coordinate planes. They're easier to draw. Well, roughly speaking, they're easier to draw, right? Um, we have the kind of this plane here. Let me draw some grid lines to give you an idea of what we're dealing with, right? Um, so this is the, the x, y coordinate plane. And it is described by a single equation, which is z equals zero, right? Um, planes in three dimensions are, are defined by um, linear equations. And those of you who have done linear algebra or are in linear algebra right now, um, you're dealing with a bit of this, that um, in that class as well, right? Uh, we have the, uh, the yz plane, which is, you know, I guess the plane of the of the board here, or of your page, if you're working on paper at home. All right, so this is the, the yz plane, which is given by x equals zero. And finally, there is the, maybe we'll do a different color just to sort of tell it apart. Um, we have the, yeah, draw it like this. Okay, here is the, the xz plane, which is given by y equals zero, right? Um, and then after these, sort of the next simplest planes that you can draw are the ones that are parallel to these coordinate planes. Um, and those are given by setting one of the three variables equal to a constant, right? So if I change, so if I take z equals zero and I change the zero to like a one or a two or a minus three, right? That's going to take that x y plane and shift it up or down, right? If I change the value here, that's going to take this plane and move it sort of forward or backward, right? This one here, if I change the value for y, it's moving it this way, going across, right? Um, so those are the three coordinate planes, um, and one thing that um, I didn't mention earlier but often comes up is that the coordinate planes, they divide three-dimensional space into what we call octants, right? There are sort of eight regions depending on the signs of the three variables, right? Um, because we can choose two possibilities here times two possibilities here times two possibilities here gives us eight in total. Um, the First octant is the one where x, y, and z are all positive, right? That's kind of the region that's bounded off by the planes as I've drawn them here, right? Um, but we have other octants and nobody ever remembers how they're actually numbered. Um, it's not necessarily that important. Um, uh, but we do have this idea that the coordinate planes divide space up into these three regions, right? Uh, now, uh, in general, right, a, a general plane Well, a general plane is going to look like, say, AX plus BY plus CZ is equal to D, right? Uh, so here, A, B, C, D, those are all real numbers, okay? Um, and 
later on in this chapter, we will get into more detail on how do you actually sort of um, sketch a plane in general, how do you sort of tell what's going on. Um, we have to introduce vectors first because a key ingredient with understanding sort of the placement of a plane in space is going to be the so-called normal vector, right? Uh, the normal vector is going to be given by these coefficients a, b, and c, uh, but again that's a story for later on in the, in the course, in the chapter, okay? Um, but in, in general, I guess when you try to draw a plane, you kind of imagine drawing sort of some sort of thing at an angle, something like that. Um, right, it's, it's hard to actually draw something here that, that we can make good sense of. Um, now, one of the things that you can do to sort of get some kind of idea of what's going on with the plane is you can figure out the intercepts of the plane with the coordinate axes, right? You can figure out where does the plane actually meet the three axes. And you kind of get a little triangle there formed by those points. And that triangle, of course, lies in the plane. Um, that is often helpful for sort of understanding how a plane is oriented in space. And the way you find those points, of course, well, this is what you get when y and z are both equal to 0, uh, x and z are both equal to 0, y and x and y are both equal to 0, right? You set two of the three coordinates equal to 0 and solve for the other. Um, and of course, if, uh, if one of these coefficients is missing, um, then you can't solve for that coordinate. And that's a, a case where you have a, a plane which is, is going to be, say, um, vertical or horizontal, right? Something that is perhaps um, parallel to one of the coordinate planes or, you know, maybe parallel to a, a line, passing through a line going through, say, one of the coordinate planes. Um, you can have that happen as well, of course. Okay. All right, so that's, that's kind of the rough idea. Um, as we develop sort of this machinery and this notation of vectors, we'll have a little bit better idea of how to work with these things. Um, that's coming up later. For now, we'll do a couple basic examples.